Hey everyone, it's Grandmaster Painter, and I am back. Um, I want to start uploading more videos, even though it's been a long time. I still have been doing a lot of hobby stuff. I have a lot of stuff to show you that you haven't seen yet that I've been working on. And I also have new stuff that I want to start working on later on this year and going into next year. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to be doing too many videos right now because I work a lot. So maybe one video a week or maybe two. We'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so anyway, moving on. I do have a topic that I want to, something that I want to talk about today, which the reason why I want, want to talk about it is because I kind of want to get the word out. I, I you know, a lot of people probably already know, but there's probably also a lot of people that don't know. And I want to kind of warn you and kind of, you know, put up a beware sign when it comes to this kind of thing because I wish I knew this. So, and that is about the Citadel dry brushes. Or, I don't know, these are the only two brushes that I've bought from them uh, in a long time. I just use, like, these are... This is like a cheap brush from Walmart. And these are from like some craft store like Michaels or something like that. I do have some more expensive brushes that are still not that expensive. This is from, um, I bought this off of Amazon. And I do have some Army Painter brushes coming in that I want to test out. But anyway, I wanted some good dry brushes because I don't have any. Or I didn't. And I just had these cheap brushes that were really bad. The bristles were really too tough for dry brushing and everything like that. So I picked up a large dry brush and a medium dry brush. I think that, I don't think they have a small dry brush, but I was trying to look for it. I couldn't find it. Um, so overall, picking it up, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a you know that good of a brush. It was like somewhere around six dollars. I can't remember exactly both of them. Um, so anyway, the bristles are soft for dry brushing. They're kind of, it's a kind of a weird shape for dry brushing. I wanted it to be more of a kind of thick circle because I like to go around and around. And I figured that would really create a good um, kind of surface for the paint to you know, be dry brushed or whatever. So as you can see, here's two models that I started working on. Because uh, I wanted to test the dry brushes out. Plus, I wanted to start painting these guys. Um, so anyway, first off, first impressions of the brush. Kind of seems a little cheap. Uh, I don't really know if it's a, if it's worth seven or you know five or six dollars. Um, I, I'm sure you can find better brushes out there for that much, Over, but still pretty good. You know, I like the bristles. They seem really soft and they seem like a good material for actually getting the paint dry. And then, you know, like I said, they're soft, so it creates a good texture and everything like that. Um, one thing though, picking up this one straight out of the package, they just kind of threw them in a bag and they were bristles down. And I didn't really like that because, you know, the bristles can get damaged in packaging. It wasn't really packaged that well. They just kind of threw it in a bag and threw it in a box. That's it. Um, they weren't messed up or anything except on this one there was one uh, bristle that was kind of whoop, went way out. Um, which it went back in but still, you know. And then I started dry brushing. So here's what they looked like before I dry brushed. And then I just dry brush. So it's not even that much of a dry brush. Good dry brush. Good layer all around the skin areas. And then I cleaned it off in my water. And I looked. And one of the bristles was hanging all the way out. And it fell off. And so, you know, that's fine. Like, obviously they're not all falling out. But a bristle did fall out. So I don't know if that means that it's going to be weak. And I did not do... I, you know, it's a dry brush. It's a soft dry brush, and it's not, it's, you know, I, I've i worked these brushes harder than, and these are cheap Walmart brushes, and I've never had bristles fall out before. 
I don't know if that was just, you know, one bristle was loose, whatever. I picked these up. Well, I ordered them online. Like I said, they came in a box and I got that box today. And I opened it and everything like that. I should have the box laying around here somewhere. I also picked up some. These three washes. This is the, or shades rather. This is the Colia Green Shade. Oh, wait, not that one. I already had null oil. This is Drukia or Druki Violet, I guess. And then this is um, Drake Drakenhoff Drakenhoff uh, Nightshade. This is a blue, uh, purple, and a green. This is the you know null oil black. This is Riken Flesh Shade, and this is Agrak Earth Shade. And this is a uh, ink that I bought from an acrylic ink. This is that, excuse me. This is an acrylic ink that I bought from Michaels. Really good. That's how I got all this red. Um, and I use Reaper paints mostly. Um, this is the Master Paint Series. They're pretty nice. I don't really like the eyedroppers that much. And then I have some Vallejo model color acrylics back here. I love Vallejo. I plan on picking up the big $200 set of all the paints. Because I really like the eyedroppers. And honestly, the consistency of those paints, you can put it right in your airbrush and go. Uh, and it's a little thick for it, but it still works. You, I still thin them down, but I'm just saying for simplicity and you're in a hurry or whatever, boom, you can get it done. Anyway, so anyway, this was my video. I'm pretty much over with it. And um, yeah, so Citadel dry brushes, buy at your own risk. They are a little bit expensive. If, I mean, it's not that much money, six bucks, but if you want to buy all the brushes, that could be like, what, 50 bucks? There's a lot of brushes. And um, if you're having like a small detail brush and one of the bristles fall out, there's not that many bristles on there. And if one falls out, that could really mess up the brush. Or if they come in just stuck in a freaking bag, you know, that could really not be a good thing. So like I said, buy at your own risk. Um, other than that, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I will be posting more updates. These guys are all finished. Actually, I do want, I bought uh, a satin varnish from Vallejo, well, from Amazon, but it's a Vallejo satin varnish, and I'm going to spray all those guys because, you know, they're going to be touched and stuff, so I want to spray them up with that. I got some Imperial Guardsmen here that are all headless, pop their heads off, um, gonna get once that stuff re re uh, releases the new gene stealer cult stuff i'm gonna go on there and uh or hopefully i can find one of the upgrade sprues for around 10 bucks we'll see on ebay and i'm gonna pick one of those up and then put some heads on those guys for some reason this is a squad of guys that it was bought for my little brother my dad bought it for my little brother a long time ago because he, he wanted to get into it. And he was like, oh, I love the Imperial Guard. So we did it and he never got into it. He never liked it. So there's that. And then I got this. Which I bought this a long time ago. When Inquisition was in the Gene Stealer. Uh, or, sorry. The Inquisition was in the Grey Knight Codex. I bought this guy. Uh, and it was going to be my Inquisitorial Chimera. Which then they took out inclusion which makes sense but anyway so there's that and that's going to be a gene stealer guy as well and so anyway uh till next time thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one